guys welcome back to my channel today we'll be diving into project management course have you ever heard of project management tools and you are wondering what they are used for as a virtual assistant knowing how to use them is very very important and in today's video i'll be breaking it down in simple terms and also sharing my screen to walk you through how to use the tools step by step you guys know how we do it here so don't worry but before we jump into the tutorial let's quickly talk about what project management tools are and why they are very very important in a physical office you know you have to physically show up before knowing what task you have for the day like you have to get to the office before you know what you want to work on but as a remote worker your tasks are assigned through a project management tool so that when you log in or you open your laptop for the day you can see everything your project manager or your client has assigned to you without them having to chat you like do this do this they'll put everything inside your project management board and you're also expected to update the project management board with any new task to maintain transparency which means if your client actually give you a task over whatsapp or via calls it is your duty to add it to your project management tools to ensure that everybody is like everybody is aware of what you're supposed to do at that particular day you hear what i'm saying and why this is important is that imagine you've been working for like eight hours and your client asks you like what have you been working on if you do not track all these tasks you will just be racking your brain like eh, hey i've been working but you won't remember everything but if you actually put it in your project management board you will definitely remember like go there and check this out these are what i've been working on today you get what i'm saying even if you are sick or you're out of the office it's very easy for another person in the office to see where you are and where you need help and they can support you while you are out of the office I hope I'm communicating. We have several amazing project management tools out there. We have Monday.com, Asana, ClickUp, Todoist, Trello. Like we have several project management tools, but today we will focus on Trello. And I'll show you exactly how your client expects you to use it professionally as a virtual assistant. Because most virtual assistants believe that yeah, I know how to use Trello, but do you know how you're expected to use it in a remote setting? Eww. If this sounds like something you are interested in, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notification bell so you don't miss more valuable content without wasting much of our time let's dive right into the tutorial so search for Trello on your Google Chrome you can also download Trello on your Google Play Store or App Store so click on it sign up put all the necessary information and once you are done signing up you're going to see something like this in Trello we call it board so for example let's assume your company is actually using a Trello as the project management board. The first thing they will do is to actually give you access by coming to this share button. Look at my mouse and come to this share. Then they're going to input your email here and they're going to you know send you an invite. So you receive the link in your email. Once you click on it, you're going to get access to this particular board. Now, how does this work? Because I actually want us to create a project management board from scratch. So for example, let's assume I hired Miriam and John as my virtual assistant and I'm a project manager or I'm a client. The first thing I want to do is to come to this add a list and name it John's tasks. I'm going to click on add list. I'm going, I'm going to come here and name it Miriam tasks. I'm going to click on add a list. Another one will have something called ready for review. I'm going to click on add a list. Another one will name it project completed. Then we'll click on add a list. Now for the sake of this class, let's just maintain these two, which means I created um, a, um, a list for John's task, another one for Miriam task. So if I want to assign task for John, all I have to do is just to come to this hardy card on that John's task and impute any task that I want to assign for John. Let's say um, coordinate the next event coordinate the next event. I'm going to click on add a card. I can come here and say, create a Google form for the new intake. I'm going to click on add a card. I'll come to Miriam task as well. I can name it, um, I can assign another task to her. Let's say, research the top logistics company in Chicago. I'm going to click on add a card. Another one, let's say, um, let's say, finalize and maintain zero inbox today. Then I'm going to click on add a card. So for the sake of this class, let me just add another one. Let's say, schedule a meeting 
for the team. Now, as a newbie, you get to the office and you see this task under your name. Let's assume you are John and you see this task. Just looking at this schedule a meeting for the team, you might be wondering, schedule a meeting for the team. Okay, when should I schedule this meeting? How should I schedule it? You need more information than just someone giving you a task and name it schedule a meeting for the team. Here on Trello, all you have to do is just double click on the task and this interface will actually pop up. I just want you to follow what I am doing. And in the and once this shows, we have this description. That is where they are actually going to input all the details regarding the task. So now we want to schedule a meeting. I can say schedule meeting for Friday, March 28th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Invite Miriam, Ellen, um, let's say um, Rita and um, Joy. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss our annual events. Depends on what the meeting is all about. Basically, this is where they will input all the information that you need to complete that particular task. You get what I'm saying? So we have this board, we have this italic, we have this um, list, whatever. You can also um, attach link here. There is also option for you to add image. Several things here. You get what I'm saying? So don't get confused. The description is just where they put all the details that you need to ensure that this is done correctly. So let's click on save. Now, the next thing we want to do is to come to these members. Remember, you've been added as a member to this particular board. So who are we assigning this task to? We are assigning this task to John. So I'm going to click on member and we're going to add John. But because I've not added anybody, I'm just the only person here. I'm just going to select myself. So if John is here, I'll just select John as the card member. Another one is what we call labels. You see, these labels is where your client will tell you how urgent a particular task is. So I'm going to be using this color, for example. So this is red. I'm going to click on this pencil icon and name this red urgent. I'm going to click on save. Then I'm going to come to this orange. I can name it high. I'll click on save. I can come here. Let's use this one. Name it medium. I'll click on save. And I can name this one as low. And I'll click on what? Save. Let's just delete this other two. Let's just delete it. Uh, we can delete this by just coming here. Click on delete. Delete from cards. Come back here. Click on the pencil icon. Click on delete. Delete. So now, all our tasks can either be urgent, high, medium, and low. So for the sake of this class, I'm going to assign this label to be high for John. I'm going to get there, so don't worry about this one. So when we get to the checklist, there's something we call checklist. Checklist is actually, um, I'm going to be like, we can see it as a subtask under a particular task. And you, it's going to make sense. Just click on hard. The moment you click on hard, this checklist will actually come up. So I can say, schedule the meeting. That's the first task under this one. Another one is inform the team about the meeting. I'll click on hard. Another one I can say, um, I can say type out, or can I say create the memo for the meeting. I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but for the sake of this class, let's just do something like that. What does this checklist mean? It means that for the fact that I said, create um schedule a team meeting under this schedule a meeting this is another task that i need you to do on that that's what we call checklist which means once you are done scheduling this meeting the first thing you want to do is click on this checkbox like you are done another one once you are done scheduling the meeting inform the team about the meeting like send it to their communication channel like hey i schedule a meeting for next week ensure you accept the invite once you are done informing them you click on check this that means you've completed this one after that you create a memo for that meeting once you are done creating that memo, you come here and click on and check this out as well. So, which means you need to ensure that all these are completed before you mark this task as done. That is what checklist is like. You can use this as a subtask for a particular task. Let me know if I'm making sense. Another one is date, and this is very, very important. This is where we should do due dates for any project. For this meeting now, you have to schedule this meeting for March 28th. Well, today is March 28th anyways. If you are watching this, I actually should do this, like create this video March 28th. But well, let's say March 13th. 
let's say that is when this meeting is supposed to hold. So I'm going to click on date. And I can say the due date for this thing is, um, let's say, March 29. That's the due date. And I'll click on save. Remember, the owner of this task is where you had the member. Labels has to do with the priority. Is this task urgent? Is it high? Is it medium? Is it low? If you see any task label urgent, it means that's the first thing you should work on. After you are done working with urgent tasks, you now go to high. Once you are done with high, that's when you go to medium. You don't come to the office and work on low tasks first before you now come to medium or you just start doing tasks randomly. No, you need to work on the task according to the label, according to their high priorities. You get so don't get confused. Another one is the checklist that I said you need to add like a subtask to it. Then the next one is the due date. Due date. So which means on or before 29, you must have completed this task. You must have scheduled this meeting. You must have informed the team members. You must have created this memo. On or before what? March 29. You don't just say, hey, since it is March 29 now, hey, I can actually work on this on March 29. No. It means you must have completed this task on or before March 29. Then I'll click on what? I'll click on save. Another one is attachment. That is if you want to add any, uh, what's it called? Any document here, just click on attachment and use it. Then once we are done, we'll just click on save. Then let's close it. Now let's come back to this. Can you see when I click on this, it's saying high, which means this task is very, very high. And the due date is March 29. If I want to assign due date for this one too, I can just right click here. Click on edit date. I can have the due date as March 31st. I'll click on save or edit the label and give it urgent. Then I'll close it. Then everything is here. This yellow button is saying that this thing is like the due date is very, very soon. So you must complete this task. So this is urgent, which means when you come to the office, the urgent won't even come first before this schedule a meeting. So you have to work on this urgent before you work on this schedule meeting. But the most important part is that ensure that you complete this task on or before the due date. Now, let's assume you are done. You've created, you've scheduled this meeting. You are done with everything. You don't just say, hey, I'm done and you just leave it like that. No. The next thing you want to do is open this task up. Check all these things like, oh, I've done this. I've done this. I've done that. Then come to this comment section. And tag whoever assigned this task to you. You can tag the person and say, I'm done scheduling this meeting. Whatever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, just put it there like I'm done, blah, 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 and click on save. Or let's assume you are working on something. For instance, now, let's say you are done with um, scheduling the meeting and you need to continue this task tomorrow. You can just come here to the description and say, Pending items. I believe this checklist even works. Like, since you already checked this already, then, and you are yet to uncheck this one, they may actually not need all this. But if you just want to do, do the normal, you can just say, pending item. I need to do what? Inform the team and create a memo. Why are we doing all these things? So that when anybody comes to our tax, the person will see where we are and all the pending items. But this checklist actually do everything like you've scheduled the meeting you've checked it anybody that comes here and see that you are not you've not unchecked this one it's like if you've not checked this one it means you are still working on them do you get now when you are done and you've actually um left a comment here for the person all you have to do is to actually drag this task and move it to project completed you can drag and drop you are done scheduling the meeting, you are done informing the team, you are done creating the memo, just drag it to the project completed. And if it is a task that your client needs to review or your project manager needs to review, you just need to drag it, drag it to ready for review. They will tell you once they are done, let us know if it is ready for review. So just drag it to ready for review and you can actually come to the comment section, like I said earlier, and tag the person and say, oh, this is ready for review. Which means once you are done or your project manager or whoever assigned these tasks to you is ready, they'll just go back to this ready for review. They'll view whatever you said you've done, if you've done it right. If not, they will actually leave a comment for you here as well and they will drag it back to your task. So which means once you come in and you see that the task that you dragged to ready for review is back to your task, it means you need to do one or two things on the task. But if it is completed, the person will just help you to drag it to project completed. And remember what I said, if your clients give you any task, whether via phone or during meeting, or just come here and add it under your task, even if your project manager did not add it as a task for you, so that you will have a clear 
um, can I say clear vision of what you are supposed to do on a particular date? So that when your client is asking you, what have you been working on? It is very easy for you to come to your project management board and say, oh, I've been working on this, I've been working on this, I've been doing this. And when you are sick, it is even very easier for people to just come in and say, oh, you know what? This is what John needs to work on. Let me help him. And they will also see where you have on that particular task. And they can know where to, you know, where to continue on that particular task. I hope this is clear. So <laughs> basically, that is it about um, how to use Trello as a beginner. And that's how you use Trello as a project management tool. I hope this walkthrough was helpful. And if you find value in this, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any question. And if you are new here, my name is Omaomi. I am a virtual assistant and a virtual assistant coach. I help people like you learn the skills they need to learn remote job. So if you want to go deeper into learning how to become a virtual assistant or how to optimize your Upwork profile, your LinkedIn profile, how to build your CVs, I actually want you to check the description box for my services. I offer several amazing services. Just click on it and it will take you to my storefront and you can do what enroll for anyone that works for you thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video you're welcome